Hey, hi, yeah. I'm Chris. <laughs> and I'm Cherie. We're of Technobadia. And we live in a bus. <laughs> oh, kind of like that one there. Uh, uh, welcome to our live video stream video chat series where every month we take a different question, um, topic and talk about it for a little bit and then take our viewer questions. So this month's topic, well wait, what month is this right now? We're, uh, today is May 20th, 2015. It's approximately 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. If that matches your time right now, um, you're viewing this live and you'll be able to interact with us. If it doesn't, you're catching the archive and... If, if you're in the archive, you're not going to be able to chat with us. Um, not live anyway. <laughs> not live, we do yes. answer questions if you if you leave a comment to this video on YouTube. We do answer the questions there when, when we have time. Um, but we do these video chats. They're basically just a fun. It's just another way for us to present a whole bunch of information without getting carpal tunnel syndrome by typing. <laughs> right. And, and it's just a fun way to be interactive. So we love to have the comments. We love the questions. We love to know that there are people out there who appreciate this and appreciate us. And having um, a time, I think it make, it makes us committed to actually doing these sessions. Yes. I mean, we could just go and record us talking about a topic, but we're probably never going to do it if we don't have a commitment <laughs> to do it. So that's why we do these live and um, we really enjoy them. So thank you for joining in yeah. if you're here live with us. And, um, and what is the topic this month? The uh, topic this month is uh, work-life balance while traveling in an RV. I think I gave it another <sighs> spiffy title up there. Okay, so... so this is something we suck at. We're just going to start off right off the, right off the bat. We, we try. We, we actually aren't. We, we actually do a really good job some of the time, but we get so sucked into so many great work projects that the next thing we know, three months have passed, and we're like, wait a second. We haven't, <laughs> we haven't done anything. Yeah. Um, but it is a struggle that we've had. Uh, we, as many of you know, we've been on the road eight years for me, nine for Chris. And uh, we work as we go. We're software developers, consultants. We run the RV Mobile Internet Resource Center. Uh, we're always doing advising. We do mobile apps. We're always up to something work-wise. And trying to fit in the work hours and being productive and uh, all everything that comes along with traveling and in RV travel, yeah. it's hard to, to fit it in sometimes. It, it, well, yeah, just this, the nature of, this, the, of the RVing lifestyle is... Um, well, all the, I guess, role models you look to, for the most part, they're the people who are either on vacation, they're out there like, hey, this is our RV trip, or they've retired and they're full-timing, and, well, if you're still trying to get work done, there's not a lot of good patterns to pattern yourself after, and it's really easy to make a lot of mistakes. So a lot of when you're working um, in RVing, it's a lot of combining some of the skills that work at home folks have to go through as well, and that's developing some discipline to get work done while you're at home. But now you have the extra complication of having travel days, routing, distractions of constant new locations, and encountering people who just don't understand that yeah. you're not on vacation. It will, and also you're working in a very challenging environment. You don't have, even even work from home people usually have a home office. Whereas when you're in an RV, it's, it's not impossible, but it's a lot more complicated to have a home office, some place you can go to that is very clearly switched to work mode. And uh, that's one of the very first topics. If you want to follow along, we have um, linked in the description of this is an article that we wrote earlier this year on work, life, and travel balance. And we'll kind of be going over some of those bullet points there and expanding on them if you want to follow along. There's a lot more resources there about what we're going to be talking about. Um, so, like Chris was saying, the first thing is the office space in an RV. <laughs> <laughs> when you work for somebody, you usually are going to their office and they're providing you a desk and a computer and usually a reliable mobile internet, or not mobile, a stable Real internet, internet yes. connection. Uh, when you're in an RV, you're going to quickly find when you start shopping for RVs, not many of them come with desk space. Or, or even a, any thought to ergonomic seating. You know, at, at best, you're going to get a dinette and a lounge chair. Um, we are seeing some newer RV um, things. They have a little um, credenza or desk. They're, you will quickly realize that they're more meant for doing email and banking, maybe a little routing, not actually working eight to ten mm -hmm. hours at a spell. Or, or having a real monitor or having a real chair or all, all these things. So, so these are the sort of things that it's very easy to um, you know, dive into the RV lifestyle and you pick the perfect RV thinking everything through other than your workspace. Or you, maybe you already have an RV and you've got to figure out how to create a workspace out of it. And that right. becomes a challenge. And we see often, I mean, a lot of people, when we first hit the road, we had a small travel trailer. It was 16 feet. We, uh, <laughs> our dinette, which doesn't make a great office space, um, was converted, also was, the bed. Was also the bed. So we were dealing with the struggle of having to convert our bed to our dinette 
to be our office space during the day and then back in the evening. And we have offset sleep schedules. So right. that became a problem for and, us. And in particular, that, that was a, a tough layout for a single person. I started off solo to work because you had that whole transformation every day. And just before you can go to work, you had to, well, am I going to work in bed or am I going to actually make my desk? But when once we were, were living together and Shreed moved into this tiny, tiny, teeny tiny little trailer we we knew kind of the, one of the moments that it really sunk in that we need to get something different was one day we had a big work project and i was up late uh, doing an all-nighter doing some i think it was a patent analysis something or another and she just there was no place to, to for her to sleep so she just curled up on the floor i got one of the couch cushions off the dinette put and, it on the floor and i slept in his feet now that's cute the first time cute the first time <laughs> not gonna be good the second time we're like we need the, and, and that was actually the driving criteria. If we went to an Oliver, we still wanted something super small, but we wanted a bed that would always be a bed and not need to have and have the a bed separate dinette area. And then what we found in the second RV setup that we had, which was this bed that was always set up, and then a side um, dual dinette. We thought both of us would be able to work <laughs> out with laptops. Didn't work, uh, but. Dinette seats are not ergonomic and quickly we're having lower back pain. We were hunching over and having shoulder pain um, And it just it, it lasted was, for years, but it was tough, tough. Yeah. And you think okay I'm gonna be able to work outside on a picnic table or I'm gonna go in the hammock and we do some we do some mm -hmm. of our reading and research and um, Some of that other stuff we'll do outside on an iPad. You'll attend some classes. Yes, you do, do, like do video of... online classes are great out in a hammock. You just feel awesome. But if we're actually doing work and that's programming or writing up stuff or or producing videos, like getting this one ready for the for the archive, um, that's not stuff that we find that we can do outside because there's rain, like it's raining right now. Yeah. We, if we were depending on working outside, that wouldn't work so well. Um, bugs, uh, they're, they're out there. Mosquitoes will eat you alive in some places. Yeah, nosy neighbors. Nosy or, neighbors. Or, or just curious neighbors, or just the embarrassment of, of having neighbors be kind of like, what's going on over there? And it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. really Yeah, and there's tough. also sun glare. Um, a mm. lot of screens just don't aren't bright enough to be yeah. seen outside, so you have to kind of construct this little tent, and you're putting your head inside a tent to use your laptop it's just it, it, you can also go work at uh, cafes and libraries mm -hmm. and if you thrive on working in a public area that might work great for you and like, be a great way to get away from other household yeah. distractions yeah. um chris and I, you do okay working sometimes in public locations i don't yeah. i need a focused concentration mm -hmm. time so it, it becomes very critical just to think through every person is going to be different every couple might have two different needs actually every family might have kids doing homeschooling or things like that, which is kind of a, their equivalent of work-life balance. Everybody, it, it becomes so much easier to achieve that balance if you have a good quality workspace that you can enjoy working in. And for some people, actually, the biggest, most critical thing that they need is they need to be able to put that workspace away. Um, for us, that doesn't really become the case because our office is also in the middle of our living room and in the middle of our kitchen and everything. But other people we know, it was the key for them being successful on the road to actually have the office set up someplace that they pull a curtain or close the door and it is gone. Right. We've seen some people, they'll get a toy hauler type setup where you've got like a back uh, area that's meant to maybe carry boats or scooters or something like that. They convert that to an office area that they can close off. Uh, we've seen some people find fifth wheels that uh, have like a back bedroom and they use that front area as their office. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen some people that take in uh, motorhomes or trailers that have a bunk area that was maybe designed for traveling with kids. They mm -hmm. rip out the bunk area and turn that into an office area. We've got a lot of great example mm -hmm. workspaces. Online. Yeah, on the blog, go to mm -hmm. technomadi.com slash workspaces. And uh, we've got, we've actually done about a dozen case studies of how people have converted RVs into mm -hmm. usable, workable uh, workspaces. And that is a just so first key is we're going to say is <laughs> really think through having productive and comfortable workspace. Mm -hmm. um, some people uh, can also like use a dinette that's also uh, going to be their, their eating area or a bed area that converts back and forth. That conversion process takes time sometimes to go back and forth. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind if you're going to be okay with that long term. Right, because yeah, that becomes a big chunk of your day perhaps is a transformation and that could just destroy that work momentum. And then that destroys your life momentum in a sense. Right. What's our next topic? 
Ah, uh, minimize your moving days. Ah, yes, okay. moving days. So um, I know in our first year, this is something that we, <laughs> you set out and you think you're going to be able to get across country. And maybe you're going to do it all. You're going to do it all. You're going to stop at all the national parks on the way. You're going to keep a pace and maybe you're going to go and attend your friend's wedding. And then you're going to go to your brother's graduation. And then you're going to go to this other event and you're going to go to all these events, catch up and with everyone you ever went to high school with. Uh, we, we, we actually, <laughs> that first year, we even set out with um, an in motion driver's desk. Or not passenger's desk, so a, a, a laptop stand designed for the, the passenger <laughs> to work while driving down the road and um, manage that. And for being on call, that was actually that, that's useful. when I had a, a, a major client that I had to be on call and accessible Monday through Friday every single day. Yeah. We don't have that. We that's something that long we gone. Yeah. we long on. That became something that we just figured we couldn't do any longer. But um, yeah, it's a moving days. <laughs> so you're driving, you're getting your miles in. So, you know, if you're driving 20 miles or 200 miles, some people drive 400 miles in a day. Um, that's time that you're in motion and you can be productive if uh, you've got someone else driving and you can probably get some stuff done. I can answer emails on my iPad while we're underway. Mm -hmm. I can do minor stuff, but I'm not going to be getting big projects. Productive. And then you think, oh, well, I'm going to get where we're going and then it's going to be work time. And we've just discovered that trying to make a full work day out of travel days, it's very bad idea to plan on that and to count on that. So, because a work day, a travel day is not just the miles. So you start out in the morning, you've got to get everything ready to get in motion. And that could be for us, we've got to put down the vegetables onto the couch. <laughs> we've got to get the litter box out of the driver's area. We've got to hitch All up the, the mini. We've got to unhook the everything. We've got to dump, maybe dump tanks. And and, it, and it's only, I mean, we've got it down to a 15 minute process sometimes, but it's a, a big mental process more so than a physical process. And then you've got to undo it when you get to a new location mm -hmm. and get set up. So you've got to go get plugged in. You've got to undo everything that you've put away. you got to unhitch the toad and, and, and back and, into your spot. And then if anything happened in the drive, just, just even just the stress of a drive, like being stuck in traffic or problems with campground registration. Windy, or, we had a windy day yesterday. Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah, driving through wind for three hours, by the time you get to where you're stopped, all you want to do is drink some wine and catch your breath. And if you even have in the back of your mind while you're driving through that wind or the traffic, that, oh, I got to get I, this done. I got to get to work. I, I got to go. I got to get there. I got to get to work. That's just going to cause you to rush. It's going to cause you to be stressful, and it's going to make for a bad drive. And it's going to make for very uncomfortable, unproductive work time. So try as best you can have travel days be separate from work days. If you can. And, if you can. And what that typically means for us is, in, we've slowed down our pace a lot when we are in our first. Even two and three years, it took us a while to learn this, um, is we would maybe get someplace and we would be still maybe only be there for two nights. And so that meant a travel day getting there and then we're mm -hmm. pushing ourselves to get yes. work done when we got in. We maybe had one day of work and then the next day we're on travel again. And we can do that for the short term still, but we find we really need to have mm -hmm. less travel days and be places we're finding right now for the last two months we've been traveling we've been still four to five days at a time in one location mm -hmm. and then traveling maybe 150 to 200 miles in between and that's been working out that's really well really good pace it was enough enough time to be social enough time to actually go out and see the places we're at and enough time to get comfortable work done but when we're doing big projects mm -hmm. um, like when we're writing our book last year uh, when we're developing a new app or maybe we're on a consulting project um, we really need the dedicated time and we'll just go find some place for two or three weeks yeah. um, or, or if we're moving locations it's maybe only 20 miles like yeah, last summer when we wrote the book short ones. we just did up the Michigan eastern coast and we just moved 20 or 30 miles at a time stop for anywhere between four days and ten yeah. days and well you know, even those 20 mile drives we tried yeah. not to make those work days those became the days we, we drive and then you Go explore, be more, the, explore area. the area you know get comfortable get settled in and then have the next day be a full work day um, and that does keep you sane. Is is key. and then it also keeps things cheaper too. Because if you're staying for a week at a time or a month at a time, you can time, get more discounts. You get a lot cheaper um, stays at places. So it it can help. You'll find your balance. Um, if you've got a committed work schedule, like when I was working with a client where I had to be on call for a certain mm -hmm. number of hours a week, or you know you have to like check in with a, a home base office, or even if you're working on site somewhere like a work camping job or uh, doing some sort of temporary seasonal work like at Amazon or something like that. Um, your driving days, of course, are going to need to be scheduled in around your work schedule. Right. 
Um, and we'll talk a little bit about minimizing the work stress uh, mm -hmm. so that you can make your work obligations. Oh, so, yeah, that's yeah, a that's setting as a work schedule. Said, oh, yes, hey, set, I said what right into it. I was <laughs> like, I wrote this article or something. <laughs> yeah, so, so actually having a schedule. It, this is one thing. You know, one thing we love about the RVing lifestyle is how unstructured it is. We love how, you know, you can respond to the moment. You know, like, oh, I want to go here. I want to do this. There's a beautiful day. There's something, something exciting comes along. But to get your productive work done and actually do it in a balanced fashion and not a panicked fashion, sometimes it really, really helps to actually have a work schedule. Yeah. Um, so if you've got, you know, a work schedule could be set by exterior things. You've, who you're uh, working for. Or right. Who you're working for. Uh, one of our businesses is running the RV Mobile Internet Center and we do private advising sessions and <laughs> we let people book Time, time with us right. for us to assess their um, needs with mobile internet and we give them advice on what their setup mm -hmm. should be um, and we have an online schedule and I we just put aside a few hours a week on that schedule that people can book mm -hmm. and that kind of sets what the rest of our week is going to be like and it was like oh okay so we've got a consulting call at six o'clock tonight well that means today's going to be a work day we're just going to yep. do work today and then be here so we can take that call and tomorrow we'll go out and play right um, we know a lot of people, and everybody has different needs for structure in their life. We know a lot of people um, who are nomads who say, okay, I've got my work schedule. I'm working from 10 till 4 every day. I've got that, that six-hour block. You know, Maybe have breakfast beforehand and lunch or di early dinner after. And they'll just go seal themselves up, and that's what they do. And that's, that's how they get their work done, mm -hmm. and they try to keep everything separate yeah. from that. We know other people who have... Um, are not working for themselves who have that s a schedule set outside. They have to be on call. They have to be logged into a chat room or onto a, onto mm -hmm. a, a conference call at sometimes 8 a.m. And that might be 8 a.m. on a different time zone than <laughs> you're in, which can make things really, really awkward. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about time zones a little bit because yes. that's, that's another stickler yes. here with, yes. with working on the road. If you're working with East Coast companies and you're, um, on, the you're on the West Coast, Coast you get to be an early morning person. <laughs> um, so yeah, having a work schedule, knowing how you work best and how you're most productive. Uh, when we're in intense mode, we pretty much work 18 hour days. We actually yeah. call it working nine to five, uh, <laughs> nine a.m. till five a.m. Um, and we do we, tag team. We do tag team because we usually we work in unison with each other. Uh, we have different skill sets that we merge with the projects we're doing. So he does work best overnight. Love so, to work all night. So he'll work all night. I'll go back and watch Star Trek reruns or whatever I'm watching on Netflix, and then. I get up in the morning at nine or so. I pick up where he left off. I work through the morning and I get my isolated time when he's sleeping in. And then we do our joint work in the afternoon. Usually, you know, take a break for dinner and a walk or something like that, or, and then kind of repeat that pattern. Yeah, and so that's how we found we work best when we're on an intense project. Yes, we try that. That's that's when we're not doing a very good job of overall balance. So. Yes, yes, I mean that is when it's work. <laughs> Big no project, balance. get it finished. <laughs> um, but yes, we, we much prefer when we're working, um, you know, the, yeah. the f much fewer hours a week. Yes, but we do that when yeah. we want to be, we like working in the long, intense bursts. We'll maybe do that for two or three weeks. Yeah. And then we afford ourselves then the ability to go into our next, hey, I have to yeah. do these segues yes. really yes. nicely. So, so the next to play thing, schedule. <laughs> and for people who are prone to be workaholics or who just, like, if they've got work in front of them, just can't stop doing it having a play schedule just like some people need a work schedule to motivate them sometimes like you're living this rv lifestyle and you're someplace amazing and beautiful and you're in front of your computer all day and the sun comes down it goes down and you're like ah, oh, i'm ready for a break and well there's nothing you, you you can no longer go see the grand canyon because the sunset um <laughs> so actually having a pre-scheduled play schedule if you can work this into outside time commitments saying that okay Tomorrow, from 11 a.m. till 4 p.m., we're going to go out and see the place we're at. We're going to go hiking. We're going to go to the museum. Yes. We're going to go and do these sort of stuff. Uh, we've found that we love traveling with some of our retired friends, whether and uh, and they're out doing more exploring. And we may not be able to join them for everything, but it really motivates us to get off our butts and get out there and do stuff. Right. Um, so we love traveling with with people like that because it's like left our own devices. We'll just go into workaholic mode. Yeah. And and, 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 and and indeed, you sometimes need to plan 
just like you have to meet work constraints, outside constraints, sometimes the play constraints are like, you've got to go out, there's a show to see, or there is a tour, or there is a particular hike, or there is a sunset. You know, the sunset's only going to happen once a day, and I hear sunrises happen on occasion, too. I think those are daily yeah. as well, Okay, right? yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> but, you, you, you know, so so actually, a lot of times what we really like is to, to have every few hours, we'll just go take a half-hour walk. Or go take and, a hike. And um, take a hike, and we try to schedule them like, oh, it looks like there might be a sunset. We're, we're really good about taking breaks for sunsets and so that'll be you know go see the sunsets set that aside maybe we'll go back to work later in the evening but having that play schedule having just a few pointers in time that keeps us from getting and we'll too make stuck. we'll make dates to say hey we're gonna go do <laughs> like yesterday we made a date uh we hadn't had indian food in a while and there's an indian restaurant nearby mm -hmm. so we made a date yesterday to go out to lunch together um we just you have to make a point. Don't forget that you are out there on the road for a reason. For a reason. You're not there just to work all the time. Yes. Otherwise, uh, you could just seal yourself in a cubicle and you know. <laughs> so do make sure you're getting out there and taking advantage of it. Just make. You might have to make the space and you know recapping what we've already talked about. That might be longer stays in one location so that you can get the work in mm -hmm. and see the area. And then and, you know. and and it also lets you time shift depending on the area. So mm -hmm. and if you're in a place like uh, you know a major urban area where there's a lot of nightlife you want to be focused on doing the nightlife then you might start your work day earlier so you're clear mm -hmm. in the evening but if it's a place that it's got a lot of daytime stuff you want to do well you might do your daytime stuff and actually get your work done at night yeah and what we're doing right now um is we just took about two weeks kind of light work schedule where we were only maybe working about two hours a day on projects and then spending a lot of time being tourists while we were in st louis with we both had family there we had friends we were visiting with and we we're kind of playing tour guide so we spent those uh time there being more play mode mm -hmm. and then right now we're about to go into a mode where we're going to be dropping the bus off to be repainted uh tomorrow and uh <laughs> and then we're heading off to alaska by rail and sea so we're going to be kind of also back in play mode in a sense a little bit but we will be well, working yeah. remotely but right now we've taken the last 10 days in places where we didn't know we knew no one would know us hopefully because she's about it's just a moment okay. and then um we would and we've been focusing on work so we intentionally put aside these 10 days to to get a lot of projects done so that we know that the next week we're, we're going to be in project mode with the bus Okay, the cat. The cat's entertaining us, so it's fine. Oh, she, she didn't manage to break the glass that she just knocked off because it landed on the cushion. So you could have heard a very dramatic smash, but fortunately the cushion caught it. So yeah, we 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 just do that sometimes. Is we just say, hey, the next week or so is work mode, and we'll just go into long work days. Right. We'll find places that maybe have hiking trails around and easy, quick distractions nearby, so we don't get bored and we don't go into total workaholic mode. Um, but we focus and then we know that for the next two weeks we're a little more free right and that's what really works for us mm -hmm. is intense and then less intense so but that's one of our, our coping mechanisms okay travel stress mm -hmm. so when you're living stationary of course stuff comes up in life uh, your kids get sick you might have to fly out of town for uh, an emergency with a family you might have the ice maker going crazy in your refrigerator and having to go get fixed that stuff always co does come up when you're living stationary so just remember just because you're living the dream RV lifestyle, stuff still breaks, stuff still happens. Um, and, and actually, when you're in an RV, it's sometimes a lot less predictable than in a, in a, in a home, too. So you've got, because you're going to a new location, you don't know what are the things that happen here. Or you don't know, you know perhaps, that the internet is really, really lousy where you're headed to next. Um, things like that that you, just come You encounter out of the traffic. Um, yeah. A mechanical breakdown means your house is, is broken, broken down um as well as your transportation mm -hmm. um anything else uh, you might get to your campground and find out that the spot you had reserved doesn't fit your rv or you can't get into it so you might have to scramble for or, a or that the spot you have reserved has a family reunion happening next door and way too much noise for you to be able to have do a conference, conference call. calls we've gotten to some locations where we've had one of these video chats scheduled and uh that's when the campground decided to do lawn maintenance yes. so we've had uh <laughs> lawn mowers going on outside and that's just yep. you know it's, there's all these little things that go on when you're on the road that can add challenges so some of the things that you can do to kind of get rid of some of them uh we try to and we we fail at this sometimes um, if we have a big project, we've got one of these uh, chats scheduled, we've got a client call scheduled, we try to be into our location the day before. 
and just so that we can do dry runs and just so that we have an opportunity if we need to come up with a plan b we can take it so if we've, we if we've gotten someplace and like oh the internet isn't good does this mean we have to raise a mast does this mean we have to to move sites does this mean we have to move move completely to a different place to be able to get online or are we going to have to go into town mm -hmm. um to to do a phone call yeah. or whatever so we know what the plan b c or d is mm -hmm. going to have to be yes. when we get down to plan v which is uh vino then we're uh because <laughs> it, there's nothing worse than being half an hour before a big call and then be scrambling when you realize that something is not right, something's not Or if you have work. a big project due, maybe you've, you're working on a school project or you've got a big report due with your company, oh. um, having a big download and you just don't have the internet to get it done. So if you've got the big stuff in, pad in the time so that you can get that stuff done. And if you're like thinking you might want to try something like boondocking or dry camping for the first time, trying to do those new sorts of lifestyle shifts while you've got a big project going on is sometimes a recipe for stress. <laughs> right, right, yeah, because yeah, we know people who've gone out, they're boondocking the first time, and they've never really gone an entire day on Without... their own batteries before. And they're like, the the, the batteries are dying before the workday's done, and they got to mm -hmm. run a generator, but then they can't hear the phone. And it's like all these things that you could learn uh -huh. if you have some dry run time. Right. So let's talk about time zones in this area because that's kind of one of those travel stressor uh, okay, things. Yes. So there's obvi the obvious time zone shift what, of what time zone are we in? We're currently on central, but tomorrow we go to Eastern. Yes. Cause we're in Indiana, but we're in the part of Indiana that is on to have... central. So. So, so it's always no, you, sometimes you might think, Oh yeah, Indiana's in Eastern, but there might be little areas that you're in that are still different. Mm -hmm. Um, Arizona, doesn't practice Daylight one savings of, time. That, yeah, yes. that one. Yeah. Um, so, and then you also, when you're booking a call with somebody who's in a different time zone, you say, oh yeah, we'll do that at two o'clock. Who's uh, two? Who's time zone? Always verify time zones when you're booking a call or an appointment. Um, and then there's, when you record it on your calendar, you'll often find that uh, when you switch time zones, your appointments get scrambled because calendars assume that you're always booking. I don't know what the, they're assuming. I, I have not <laughs> seen an online calendar since the Palm desktop that does time zones in a sensible fashion. I think they're all garbage of the current, <laughs> current, current technology. I have to go back 10 years ago to a, a, a so you, you that does you've it booked right. This, maybe it's a phone call or a video call or, or one of these video chat sessions. You say, okay, 7 PM. Uh, you get to your new spot. It's like, what time zone was I in when I made it? And who was that with? And what did I mean? So one of the tricks that we do is instead of trying to trust and figure out what our calendaring systems are doing, is I actually put in the description of the any appointment, and time zone. the time and time zone. So I might have a block on my Google calendar that says 7 p.m., but I actually put in part of the description, 7 p.m. Central. Because then I know I put that in there and I can trust that. Because if Google shifts it around because it detected we changed time zone and it's actually got it at 5 p.m., we can still look at the description and we know when the real time is. <laughs> uh, so be careful with setting uh, alarms and things like that. Just knowing that, you know, you're going to be moving around time mm -hmm. zones a lot and, it, and sometimes in places where you might not know how the time zones are. And one thing that actually gets nomads burned a lot is if you're near a time zone boundary and your phone is picking up a cell tower on across the boundary your phone is going to happily tell you you're an hour off and you might be completely messed up right so um go into your phone settings when you're on the line of a time zone and you if you see your your uh your tablet or your phone's shifting back and forth go in there and manually set it to the time zone that you actually want it to say um we found that out when we were on the line of california and arizona yes. this last winter so i just set it to whatever the time zone was there uh, just so that I always knew what it was because they don't come up and say. <laughs> yes, they don't, no, no little alert. So time zones are a challenge. Just, just think them through um, and you can get rid of that stress, but it just takes a little thinking in advance because otherwise it's not, there's, it's really un, embarrassing and unprofessional to be a, trying to make your living as a nomad and be an hour late early, or early or, late for or whatnot. Calls so and stuff. yeah, always verify when we're having communication with a potential client, we say, or if we're doing an interview for something, we're saying we are currently at the time of this thing, we're going to be in central and this is the time that we're setting it at. Um, so this kind of leads into actually setting expectations. expectations. And with, 
Before we set expectations, I want to set some other expectations. Okay. Wow. Set them. Not with you, babe. <laughs> hey. um, this is the last section of our talking part. Um, if you have questions for us about this topic or anything about RVing or nomadic lifestyles, please go ahead and start queuing those up and we'll jump right into the Q&A session after we wrap up this next session and we'll address your questions. So now is the time to start queuing up your questions. Okay. If you've asked any before this point, uh, just, we might as miss them. just assume that we're probably not gonna be able to scroll back and get them. So go ahead and starting now is when you start asking your questions. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, so setting expectations. One, one thing that is, is really critical for having a, a good productive work life on the road is making sure the people you're working with or the people you're visiting understand that you are not a, um, um, A, you're not living in a cubicle and you're not like working a regular work schedule sometimes, but B, you're not on vacation too. Right. So those are two separate things. So one, let's talk about working, uh, communicating with clients and coworkers. Right. If you have the ability to be out Yes. Some people have to consider if they're going to be out if they're if they're an RV or in a nomad. Um, make sure that people know that there may be variabilities in your connectivity and your ability to be online and accessible. Mm -hmm. um, if you know you're going to be in an area, maybe you're exploring uh, Yellowstone and your connectivity is going to be in and out. Make sure, hey, next week I'm not going to be as available, but well, I will be checking email yeah. at night. Or, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Set set realistic expectations of like, hey, I'm only going to be checking on in once a day next week. I'll still be getting work done, but I'll only be checking email once a day because I'm only going to go into town to upload and download email once. So one, if people know that and they know what to expect, they'll be like, oh, okay, got it. As opposed to thinking, why didn't this person respond? I sent them an email. It's been right. an hour. Like, so yeah, we're preparing for our Alaskan trip and we've already notified all of our mobile internet aficionado members that yes we're still going to be taking your questions in our private forums just give us an extra day or two because our connectivity is going right. to be very variable right and okay yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah set the expectations and actually we found some people are really nervous the first time they they have to like try and explain to people that they're going to be on a different kind of they're nomadic and they maybe they can't do a video call it has to just be audio but we've mostly found that people think it's really kind of cool yeah. yeah, clients think it's kind of cool. Like, where are you today? Oh, okay, that's why you can't do a video call because you're you're out in the boonies. What kind of view do you have? Send me a picture. Yeah. And it's been yeah. good. So, and then the other expectation is when you're hanging out with people or visiting friends and family in your travels, uh, maybe you're driveway surfing with them, maybe you're, they're, you're meeting up. Like, we're, there's this one time, I'm going to tell the story. <laughs> okay. um, one of the very first times we met up with a friend on the road, there are some friends that I had in Florida and we are all coming through uh, Las Vegas together. And they're on vacation. Yes. We're on working, working day. You know, re yeah. regular lifestyle. And they're like, okay, we're going to go to this show and that show and then this dinner, then that dinner and, and this and that. And you're going to come along to all this. So like, uh, number one, we don't have that much available free time. And number two, we don't have the vacation this, budget. This is, this, is your, this is your once a year vacation budget. This is our everyday, everyday life. Day life. And like, yeah. we'll do, yeah, we'll pick one show and we'll pick one fancy, fancy dinner, dinner to go out with you on. But the other times, let's just meet up in between your other, your other plans and hang out. Uh, well, we get our work done. Right. Uh, so just make sure it, it's going to be difficult for people to realize, especially if they're on vacation when they're mm -hmm. visiting you, or if they're you're hanging out with people who other RVers you'll uh, meet on the road who are retired. Okay. Um, it's just have that conversation. Say, hey, I have to get some work schedules in. Let's pick some things that we can do together. Right, and and, and the, sometimes you really have to put up that that hand and say, stop, no, like you're visiting family, and they're like. They're so used to when you're vis when people visit them, it's it's family yeah. time, it's vacation time, and well, you need set aside some days that are fully one hundred percent. Let's have family time and vacation time, but the rest of the time it's like no. Just imagine that I live nearby and that we're neighbors. We're temporary and neighbors. We're not vacationers. We're not guests in your home. Um, we've we've been to some places where we're coming in and someone's invited us to driveway surface. So I took three days off of work so I can show you around town. It's like. You oh, took time that, off of work. This is our work time. No. Like, oh, I'm glad you took time off from work because I didn't. Yes. <laughs> um, so set those expectations because it's unusual for a lot of people when they're visiting or hosting an RVer to not think that they're on vacation. So, mm -hmm. <sighs> so yeah, that's, that's, I think, our topic for today. Yeah. Any of our particular tips? I think we've yeah, covered that all. Um, Go uh, look at the article that we linked to. Um, there's a whole bunch more there and a bunch of links to related articles that we've talked about, like the workstations and mm -hmm. even income on the road ideas if you're looking for those. Uh, we're going to switch over to your questions. 
Uh, you want me to open a bottle of wine? Yeah, let's let's yes. now now it's yes. time for wine. Like this I... is when we open our bottle of wine. This uh, bottle of wine was gifted to us by uh, Small House Big World uh, last month. If you tuned in, they were guests in here in the studio mm -hmm. audience, mm -hmm. and they gifted us a bottle of wine for thanks. Uh, we do love your thanks. Uh, whether you say thanks in the comments or Facebook or YouTube, or if you really want to be generous, we love gifts of wine too. You can send us a virtual bottle. Uh, contact at Technomadia com for email also works for paypal and there's a leave a tip button on the blog so okay, we do so appreciate those if you want to send us a bottle um okay the first question is how loud is 77 decibels i'm not sure if what that was in context to um so <laughs> <laughs> okay uh now here we got who is painting our coach so we are on our way to um, um master tech rv in elkhart indiana um, and uh, we got to befriend this shop last year. They show up at all the RV rallies, and we went and had a little bit of work done last year and really got to know and like and appreciate the, the owners and the people there. And so when it came time to think about who we want to trust with our baby, um, they were the top of the list. So. so, yeah, we actually got bids from several painting companies over the last year. We've had this project um, in, mind for, in mind for quite a while. We knew when we bought the bus it was going to need to be repainted one day, and we bought the bus four years ago. It's hard to, re to think about. Um, so we had actually had gotten bids from several companies and Master Tech was competitive. I mean, not, it was in line with the rest of them, but we really like the company and the people and they, we know that they're going to treat us right. So. Cheers, by the way. Cheers. It's our okay. next question. Okay, so we've got, I work Friday and Saturday evenings. Do you find there's a noticeable difference in data speeds on weekend nights? Huh, that's an interesting question. Um, are data speeds going to be better on weekend nights? And um, usually, actually, because uh, well, the, the places that cater to weekend crowds, that's when they're crowded. And then evenings is prime time. Everybody goes online. So actually, that's some of the worst data speeds for. But OK, but there's, but, but there's another argument for that is if a lot of people are weekenders, they're out mm. by the campfire. True. Grilling and having Ooh. a beverage and, and enjoying oh. drinks. <laughs> um, so they might not be online on a right. on a weekend. True. Yeah, it's just evenings though tend to be some of the um, worst time. Prime time, wise. like six to ten p.m. is yeah. kind of some of the best, the worst speeds. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going later in the evening, you'll probably find some better speeds. Right. And our general tip is is if you've got critical work, test it in advance. Like fi find out like the day before you've got a big big project or big evening ahead of you. Test it and then also just have backup plans. So. You know, if campground Wi-Fi is not cutting it, we're always ready to switch to cellular, and we actually have both Verizon and at t and we can just cut from one to the other, because sometimes it's just one wins while the other one loses. Next question. Okay, this is from the same person. It's from Glenn's. Also says, is the noise level in most RV parks noticeably louder during the Friday and Saturday evening times? Okay, so louder on weekends. It's going to depend upon the type of RP, RV park that you're going to. We love public campgrounds, state parks, county parks, and things like that. And yes, it, they definitely get they definitely get more crowded on the weekends. Um, some of them are very sustainable or very usable uh, work but yeah expect that there's going to be families uh gathering and enjoying their time together there's going to be kids playing uh people are going to be up later around the yeah. campfire um and you, you often can pick your spots too to to try and like find we always look for the spots that feel kind of isolated and away from the big group areas and stuff like that and it's hardly ever do we have i mean campgrounds tend to be chill in general most, even most even, even when there's like rambunctious partying going on it's not at the level of a but, uh, loud and crazy a private campground that's run that's not catering necessarily to tourists um you're probably going to have other full-timers or seasonals like yourself and they're going to be going to bed at normal times and not necessarily they're not necessarily on vacation um so you can pick and choose you'll get it you'll get a if you're in a touristy area yes they're going to be more loud and crowded okay now we've got uh, Melanie asks, newbies here, hoping to go full time next year. Is it possible to save money while at a work camping position? Okay, yes. <laughs> so a work camping position um, typically means camp hosting of some sort where you're trading your time, maybe it's 15, 20 hours a week, uh, working reservations, cleaning bathrooms, mm -hmm. getting sites ready for other campers uh, in exchange for your site. Now, can you save money? Yes, you are saving money on the campground fee. Uh, some might actually be able to pay some of your hourly wages. So obviously you're gonna be able to save money if it actually pays a wage. Yep. Um, but you also need to look at what is the value of that site? 
It, it, does it go for $500 a month, $600 a month? And what, how many hours are they requiring of you? And you'll typically find that it's way less than minimum wage. So can you save some money? Yes, but if you have other income earning uh, streams, options, options yeah. you may find it's better off to concentrate on those. And then pay for the site. And then pay for the site and be where you want to be. And, and, and so, so a lot of times the best reasons to do a work camping job is because it's something you think you will enjoy doing not just as a, the it most can, cost effective it can, But it can be a great, if you've got one uh, member of your household that is working a job, maybe you're starting a business and you don't have as much cash to spend as you do time. Maybe one person's working, uh, putting more concentration on building up the revenue stream and the other person in the household can then do the work camping position mm -hmm. to pay for the site yeah. to save that cash. So it right. is possible. That is a really great system. Um, there, there's, you really need to just look and be realistic about what you're saving and what your other earn, income earning potential is. Mm -hmm. And if that makes the best sense for you. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got, um, does having a cat travel with you affect your work and travel? Does a cat traveling with us affect our work and travel? Um, she's very distracting. Um, she's sleeping right now. Hey, you've been requested. So this is our cat Kiki. And today she's very, very um, pent up because it's cold and wet outside. So she's been kind of bouncing off the walls and uh, she shredded up our campground map so we didn't know where we could go hiking the other day. Um, so yeah, she does impact it. Um, yeah, we do have to think about where we're going. Um, you know, are we going to be climate controlled? Mm -hmm. Can we keep it cool enough for, warm enough for her? Um, is there going to be enough places for her to play? Because she loves to be outside on her leash and chase things. So we want to make sure that she's got plenty of room to be outside and not get tangled up in the neighbor's axles with her leash. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, like when we're having the bus repainted, we're actually taking her back to St. Louis uh, where Chris's yep. parents will be taking care of her while we're up in Alaska. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we do have to think ahead with, with uh, having a pet. Um, but, you know. She adds to our lives. Oh, absolutely. He like our and, yes. and that was the next question is, what is the cat doing while we're in Alaska? Oh, I got and, to answer one. Yay. Yes. And for, for some reason, the um, scrolling on this one has stopped. So let's see. Somebody's asking, where can you go where there are no fireworks on July 4th? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> where can you go for no fireworks on July 4th? Uh, probably somewhere outside the U.S. Probably be the best guy. Yeah, it's it's tough. Even places where fireworks are specifically forbidden, people often still gorilla, you know, just shoot off, shoot off fireworks. In some places, they, they really, really abuse things and, mm -hmm. and go to town. Um, I, I guess maybe just finding places with no people. It's but it's yeah. Tough go in this out, country. go out in the boonies, um, as far away from other people as possible. If you're gonna find people on Fourth of July weekend, they're going out in the boonies to shoot fireworks where they don't have regulations or they're not as enforced. Um, and then, you know, most towns usually have their own firework display and then people have their yeah. own ones around town as mm -hmm. well. So unfortunately it's really difficult to get away from them. Okay. So I've got to lean in. I don't know why the iPad stopped showing the chats, but, okay. um, how difficult is it to find work on the road that pays for your site and gives you a paycheck as well? Uh, so it's pretty easy if you're willing to be adaptable. Mm -hmm. Um, if you go read Interstellar Orchard. Uh, that's Becky Shade. She does a lot of that. She specifically seeks, seeks out wage paying positions and she works for a lot of the concessionaires for the uh, public park systems. So she's like working in um, gift shops as a cashier and she gets her site paid or she's paying a very minimal amount for it while earning a wage. I think she's earning $9 an hour right yep. now up in Yellowstone. But she's in Yellowstone. Yeah, she's in Yellowstone. Her, her, her office view is Old Faithful. I mean, yeah. that can't get old no matter what yeah. you're... Yeah, and she moves around spots all the time. She's really fascinating. She's uh, in her early 30s now, been on the road for about two or three years. So she's a great blog to follow. She has a lot of tips on, on how to find these sorts of yeah. positions. Yeah, so... um, working at Amazon.com during peak season in yeah. one of their fulfillment centers. That's a, a good way to bank a lot of money. They've got Camper Force is what you want to Google mm -hmm. for that to get more information on it. And they actually, they provide you a campsite and you get paid somewhere between 11 and $13 an hour plus overtime. And I think you get free pizza once or twice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah the, the positions are out there. Yeah. Um, you'll have, you'll probably want to go through sites like cool, work, cool works or work camper news or things like that yeah. to start to find them. Mm -hmm. uh, Jammin along asks, um, can you talk about the ex scapers get together at the balloon fiesta? Thinking oh. about going, but only for two or three nights. Can we still camp in the boondocking area with the group? Uh, so um, the escapers group, which is um, part of the escapees RV club, that we helped launch back in March. We, that was our project for the last year. Uh, it is specifically aimed at the working on the road aged RVer. 
uh, providing resources, um, a lot of content. They just launched the articles and blog section this week, and there's some really exciting stuff coming up next month or so. Can't reveal yet. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of the things that they just announced is they'll be, we'll be having our very first convergence in uh, at the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta in early October. And for those who've never heard of or been to the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, it's all the balloons, basically every hot air balloon on earth taking <laughs> off at once right in front of you. And you get to walk amongst the launch field yes, with it them. Is and be, it's amazing. really amazing. We got to go once a couple of years ago. It's definitely worthwhile if you can only come in for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you can book a reservation in with the Escapers group for just a couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a discount, however, if you come all nine days. I think there you get, save 45 bucks off the camping fee if yep. you come all nine days. Um, but it'll be our first convergence. And one of the goals, what's all about this work-life balance thing? Hey, it's right. on topic, yeah, actually. Yeah, it is actually very um, topic. Is uh, attending an RV rally, they're, they're just stacked from morning till night with seminars and happy hours and get-togethers. And those of us working on the road, it means we have to take vacation right. time to attend or be working at the uh, rally to make yes. it worth our while. So this will be a lower intensity um, get-together. So one of the things we push for with escapers um, reaching out to the working aged RVer is we need balance in our, our meetups. We want to meet with our peers on the road. We want to share information. We want to have some learning uh, seminars and stuff like that, but we can't have them back to back all day long. So there are extended um, convergences, yeah. so measured more like a week or two at a time. More Maybe informal, a little bit different kind of pacing. So that you can you can integrate in your daily work, whether it's homeschooling, working, or going out and exploring on mm -hmm. your own. And there'll be a couple of potlucks and um, yeah. a couple, maybe some round table discussions and things like mm -hmm. that. So that's what we're hoping with Escapers is to have more convergences around the country. And that's something we'll be yeah. involved with in, yeah. the, in the upcoming so year. We're looking for that one. So that? yeah, we are going to and, the and, and, and that should be that like our, in some ways our public debut of our, our shiny new bus and our first yeah. official event. Yeah. Um, uh, Mark from Missouri asks, if you had to select one magazine to subscribe to regarding the RV lifestyle, what would it be? Definitely the escapees. Oh, I was going to just say the internet, but okay. A, a, <laughs> oh, a you... printed magazine. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say the escapees magazine. Yeah, it is. Um, the, the escapees RV club, they, their prime target is seasonal and full-time RVers. I mean, it's for all RVers, but a lot of the content is on full-timing mm -hmm. and seasonal and long-term. Whereas life, RVing is a lifestyle, right. not just a thing you, you buy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, they've been around since the 1970s. They have a lot of great writers for them, and they cover a wide range of topics from RV safety to navigating the legal issues, mm -hmm. um, working on the road. And you'll start to see a lot of more content geared towards working age RVers now that Escapers has been yep. relaunched. So, yep. Okay, there we are. Um, okay, uh, Joshua says we're two months away from full time RV living in Florida. What questions do we need to be asking ourselves, and what are your budgeting tips, and what do we absolutely need to know? Oh, gosh. That's a big <laughs> question, Joshua. Um, you probably need to start reading some blogs. Uh, read ours, Wheeling It, Gone with the Winds, a whole bunch of others out there. Uh, look at last month's um, a video chat, which was on the cost of full-time RVing, so go back and watch the archive on that. We went over a lot of the, the expenses on the road. I'd recommend going back to the archives. We've covered a lot of the basic topics before. And I'd say the most important thing you need to know is that no matter how much research and how much reading and how much planning you do in advance, you will make dumb mistakes, bad things will happen on the road, and you will laugh them off and learn and grow from them, and overall it's just going to be a great experience. No matter how much planning or non-planning you do, you, you can't avoid all the issues and you will make, you will learn as you go. And your experience Don't is going to... Don't worry about it. Your experience is going to be your own. So yes. if we had a problem with something, that doesn't mean you're going to have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Each of us are individuals and have our own preferences and you're going to have an amazing time with it. Just let go and don't, don't worry, mm -hmm. don't overstress it. Greg asks, how often do you check emails on travel days? I'm usually sitting in the passenger seat and I keep on top of them... Pretty, she, pretty yeah, consistently. Yeah, Sheree, Sheree is on email nonstop while she's awake. And actually, um, I've, I've got a Pebble watch, so I see subject lines pop up on my wrist, too. So, you know, if something really critical comes by, we can usually see it right away. But we try not to worry about email until we have a chance to sit down and, yeah. and actually do it properly. Um, Robert says, I've accumulated several boxes of records related to business, taxes, etc. that I need to keep for at least seven years. What do you do with records that you don't want to carry with you? Scan them. 
Yeah. Scan them and digitize them or uh, put them into boxes, uh, watertight, weatherproof and stuff like that. And find bury, a, bury them in the woods. Bury mm -hmm. them in the woods. Okay, you can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or some sort of storage solution. So we have ours uh, in his parents' basement. We used to have a storage unit. We finally got rid of the storage unit and the very few things we have left, we have it in, in yep. stuff but in the basement. But digitize anything that you might need access to while you're mm -hmm. on the road. So if you need to, the, all your tax records and tax returns that you might need to reference throughout the year. Um, make sure you have those digitized in some way accessible for you on the road. Um, okay. Any issues, this is Tanya asks, any issues with VPN connections over mobile internet? From Rod and Tanya in South Dakota. Um, VPN mostly just requires a good low latency connection. So VPN over satellite can be very, very difficult and awkward. But over regular, uh, over an LTE cellular connection, actually VPN is just as good as any home cable modem and stuff. Probably even better. Yeah, actually, it's often better. So yeah, mm -hmm. v VPN. If you've got a good connection and it's not satellite, is often really great mm -hmm. on the road. And yeah, it depends on the campground Wi-Fi whether it'll be good or not. Um, okay, uh, Lisa asks, any info or site suggestions concerning homeschooling while living in an RV? Site suggestions. Site suggestions. So like like full time families. Yeah, and I'd stuff. go to full time families mm -hmm. and escapers uh, to get for information on homeschooling. Um, Kiki doesn't require too much homeschooling. She kind of <laughs> she schools could use us. Some, so yes. it's not something I have a lot of experience with. But full time families. Uh, there's several of the families groups yeah, out there. Just Google road schooling. There's uh, that'll help you zero in on some really awesome mm -hmm. resources. Right. Um, okay. Uh, Gabrielle asks, do you guys use a satellite dish for TV or just use computers to stream TV shows and movies? So we do not have, uh, we don't even use over the air antennas for no, TV. Uh, we used to on occasion. but Very yeah. occasion. Yeah. We do not have a satellite TV dish. Uh, we prefer to watch things on our own schedule. And because we have an unlimited data plan, both on Verizon and our iPad, which we're streaming this over, yep. uh, we use a lot of Netflix and we just subscribed, uh, HBO just started their HBO Now which allows us to stream. Um, if you go to our rvmobileinternet.com site and look in the news center, uh, about a month or so ago, we did an article on how to use other unlimited sources, even if they're on device, like mm -hmm. T-Mobile's on device, yep. unlimited plan uh, to do streaming and just using an HDMI cable out to a TV screen mm -hmm. to actually use it for entertainment. And for, for those of you who like live TV and stuff, there's a, a service called a Sling TV now that for 20 bucks a month, you can actually get a lot of channels live, including ESPN for sports nuts and stuff. Stream so if you can get the data for it, then you can actually get access yep. to a lot. So of there stuff are that ways way. to do um, streaming online mm -hmm. with unlimited sources, um, especially if, you, if you're willing to to buy an unlimited plan like yep. we have yep. with our Verizon and our AT and T. Okay. okay. Um, Scott asks, how do you deal with severe weather situations in an RV? You know, tornadoes, horrible thunderstorms, and so on. So um, we use several weather apps, and we also have a weather radio. One of the um, apps that we use is called Weather Radio. Called Weather Radio. And yeah. it gives us alerts if there's any um, thunderstorm or tornado warnings or watches that have been issued mm -hmm. for our area, yeah. and it automatically changes our area as we yeah. as we switch areas. And you know, when, particularly when we're anywhere, there is a chance of weather. Um, well, which is almost anywhere, but I always make it a point of first thing in the morning and last thing before bed, just check the weather, check the conditions, check to see if there's any chance of anything, just so right. that I can make sure that Right, and if we do see a, a weather pattern uh, approaching and we have the ability to route ahead of it, we will. Um, if it's something that we're going to ride through, we just make sure we know where the nearest shelter is. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of campgrounds that are in weather-prone areas um, got a designated have, tornado a, shelter have a designated such, yeah. tornado shelter, just know where it's at and keep alert. Um, and if, if also if you think about it, you know RVs are designed for going down the road. They're designed for 70, 80 mile an hour winds um, as part of their daily operation. So for a lot of the basics, you're actually in a pretty good place. But yes, when but a real tornado I mean, comes, you do not want to be in an RV. Yeah, do not be in an RV during our tornado watch. Nope. And we have taken refuge at night in a in a, a campground bathroom yep. or laundry center yep. uh, to stay safe when there was a warning and mm -hmm. issued. Yep. Um, Adam Lawler asks, when working on the road, do you typically pay taxes in the state you're working in or the state which the company is located? Uh, it really depends upon the type of work you're doing and the sort of setup that you have with them. If you're working on a W-2 for a company, you're going to be paying the taxes with them. Uh, you really should consult a mobile-friendly tax advisor for your situation to know exactly how to handle it. We're self-employed. We have our own LLC through through the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. And we very uh, 
particularly only do things where um, you know we're paying our income yeah. taxes and things like that right. legitimately with, with through, with, through Florida. But when we took the job working at Amazon and we did a, a season working at Amazon, we had to pay taxes for that work in, in Kansas because that's where that work was was mm -hmm. occurring. Um. um Dave Gingrich asks, please describe the network connection you're using right now. It has been flawless. Uh, so the network connection we're streaming this over is our unlimited AT&T iPad plan, so which you, um, if you want to buy one yourself. <laughs> uh, so we're streaming this over an iPad mini. And um, it's got four bars of AT&T LTE here in the Indiana area. And I did a speed test beforehand. It was 22 megabits down and I think about eight or nine megabits right. per second up. So this is an Awesome, awesome yeah, network. So, so right AT and T and Verizon and most of the other networks, their LTE um, are phenomenal. If you get a great signal, your biggest issue is the amount of bandwidth that you're going to use to do stuff like this. We're only able to do this because of the unlimited plans. Um, and we got but, this this yeah. plan when the iPad first came out in mm -hmm. 2010. It was only available for six weeks, <laughs> and uh, you can buy one on eBay that'll probably cost you a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars yeah. just to take over. But there's plan. Verizon. There are options to get Verizon unlimited plans too, and mm -hmm. uh, they're actually a little bit cheaper and easier to get. So we've got a guide on rvmobileinternet.com. Um, it is um, it's, a, it's a members members only guide. We've got some of the basics are in the free content or the members only guide on how to get a Verizon Unlimited plan. And um, otherwise, doing things like streaming in HD because we've been streaming this in HD is uh, can burn through a lot mm -hmm. of data. Um. Oh, so Emily asks, do you ever use Wi-Fi in campgrounds, or do you just use your own phones to get online? We primarily use um, our own phones because we tend towards public campgrounds that don't always have Wi-Fi networks mm -hmm. anyway. Um, and in, even the campgrounds that do have Wi-Fi, a lot of times they have um, they they might advertise free Wi-Fi just to the same extent they say fifty amp service. But it's like advertising fifty amp service when all they have is a, a janky old extension cord to to reach out to your rig with a fifty amp plug on it. It's it's. Most RV parks have not invested in they're giving gonna be good fine. Wi -Fi. They're going to be fine for checking your email, mm -hmm. maybe um, you know, routing your next location yes. and keeping in touch with friends and family. But if you want to do anything more substantial than that, or if you rely on mobile internet, we would highly recommend that you build your own network out of cellular, Verizon mm -hmm. and AT&T being your two keys, and consider campground Wi-Fi a bonus yeah. if you find it. And um, when you find it, sometimes you do, and yeah. it is great, and you could um, you know, responsibly go to town. You don't want to blow other people off the network and go too crazy but if the network is designed for it then we consider that's a campground we want to stay at extra days and yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want more information on mobile internet solutions um, rvmobileinternet.com is also our site where we um, provide a lot mm -hmm. of information on this we have a book called the mobile internet handbook um, I actually have a copy of it oh, right here okay here we go um, this is the book we wrote on mobile internet options. It's 236 pages on keeping online mm -hmm. as a mobile internet RVer. Mm -hmm. um, we also have an overview article at uh, rvmobileinternet.com slash overview that'll give you the basics on cellular Wi-Fi signal enhancing equipment and that sort of stuff. Yes. So you can get started there. Um, so M asks, how much data do we use a month on average? And are we concerned about drawing attention to your data usage like from Verizon? Um, gosh, we... It, we like, I guess we can use a lot of data some months and not a lot others. Depends what we're doing. Yep. Um, we like have Actually, the biggest thing we like about Unlimited is that we don't have to think about it and stress about it too much. We do also have our AT&T plan is a limited plan, but it's 40 gigs, which is... That's for our iPhones amount. that's mm -hmm. shared. And, um, yeah, we, we pay a lot of attention to managing our data. We, we just track a lot of other people who are the you know reporting on forums that they... With Verizon Limited plans, we know people who use... 100 gigs a month and have or more or more we actually know people use quite a bit more and they have not been flagged by verizon in any fashion yet but you know when when whenever anybody is that will be big news and we'll be covering it on the on the yeah. site i think we're you know, hey no no close okay. i'm trying to scroll up to see the last few questions here yeah we're gonna be wrapping um, up here soon we've been talking for an hour now so okay uh, Emily asks, how much does it cost to get an unlimited data plan? We kind of just covered that. Um, but on the Verizon front, actually, it was up. You could rent a Verizon unlimited plan yeah, for that's, about 120 that's, that's, months, but it's a complicated topic. That's, it's a deep pocket. There's a, there's yeah. a reason that it took us an 8,000 <laughs> yes. word um, guide to, yep. to talk about it. It's more than we can cover in a comment. Okay, um, okay let's see. 
Dan asks, if you didn't have the option to buy Zephyr and you were buying now, would you buy a coach with slides so you'd have more room for working? We don't like slides. We, and we, we like the kind of funky, cool, and unique. So I sometimes have slide envy, but in general, I would yeah. not go yeah, for slides Yeah, mostly what we would want slides for is entertaining and, and having more friends hanging around, around with us. Uh, a coach that is designed without slides to be in a really workable, using, livable space is actually really nice. When you have the luxury of slides, um, I find the designers can get a little sloppy in their design yes. and taking advantage of it. Um, so we saw that we specifically did not want slides. We didn't want the extra complication, the extra setup, the extra mm -hmm. risk of something else breaking. Yeah. Um, and we just like the simplicity. So. Okay, we've got, I think, one final question here from Frida. says, when you camp at a friend's house, does an extension cord work, or does it have to be something special? Depends upon your electrical setup. Right. Uh, we have a boosting inverter from mm -hmm. Victron that allows us to boost from our battery bank if we have a high load. If you're just, if you don't have that sort of uh, technology installed... Uh, then, then you might very well blow their circuits when you turn stuff on inside your rig. We actually have a dial that we could set, say, don't use more than 15 amps over so plugged into a regular garage outlet or don't use more than 20 or don't use more than 30. So we can make sure that we won't blow their circuits by adjusting how much current mm -hmm. we use. And the other thing that our inverter is smart about is it um, doesn't trip. A, it can plug into a GFCI outlet. A lot of RVs, um, if you plug them into an outdoor outlet, a regular 15 amp outdoor outlet that has a GFCI on it, it will trip the GFCI instantly. So um, if you've got a regular run-of-the-mill inverter or converter, um, you can plug in with just a an extension cord, but you're going to need to really, really limit your electrical usage, just basically lights and things like that. Don't run the air conditioner. Don't mm -hmm. run the hot water heater off electric. Yep. And if you keep tripping the GFCI, you might have to run the extension cord in the inside a window and plug it in inside the house because the outdoor outlets are usually all GFCI yep. protected. Yep. So um, you need to know your electrical system if yep. you're going to do that. Um, so um, I think that was the last question. Yes, I think it is. All right. So, so thank, you, thank guys you guys for joining us. Um, if you would like to contribute to the wine fund, uh, there's a, a leave a tip button on the bottom of every page on the blog. We always appreciate those, never expect them. And more so, we appreciate your words of gratitude. So uh, drop yes. us an email, leave us a comment on the YouTube video. Uh, we love that stuff. That's what we, keeps we us love, motivated to keep sharing. We love to, to know sharing. you're out there and you enjoy this. And um, thank you guys for joining us. And hopefully it'll get warmer again soon. <laughs> All right. And our next live video might come from Alaska. Yeah, we'll be broadcasting from Alaska. Don't know when, don't know what on what topic, but we'll come to up with Alaska. something. To Alaska. Till next